Almost five years ago, in January 2005, Sudan signed a peace agreement marking the end of 21 years of violent war between the North and the South, one in which an estimated 2 million people died from conflict or disease, and 4 million were displaced. This year, there was a sharp deterioration in the humanitarian and security situation for the population of the semi-autonomous South. In 2009, MSF medical teams witnessed the most severe escalation of violence in southern Sudan since the signing of the peace agreement. The new trend in violence has resulted in death, injury, fear, and the displacement of up to a quarter of a million people from their homes. These displaced people are then at even greater risk of malnutrition or death from diseases like cholera. Ingashun is one of those affected by the disturbing increase in violence. She fled from her village when armed men attacked, killing her daughter-in-law and stealing all she owned. While seasonal cattle raiding is common in many parts of southern Sudan, this year the pattern has been different, with more frequent and more deadly attacks. More than three times the number of people were killed than wounded in the clashes to which MSF emergency teams responded, with 87% of the victims treated for gunshot injuries. We are in front of a new pattern now. We see something different from the past. Before we would have mainly cattle raids uh, between the different neighboring tribes, uh, especially targeting the cattle, the, the resources. What we see now is something different. We see uh, the targeted uh, villages uh, together with the civilian population. So we are talking about women, children uh, and uh, old people. This is new and even the numbers of the violence are extremely increasing at the moment. This father and son were injured when their village in another state of southern Sudan was attacked by armed men. <laughs> This disturbing trend in attacks is not the only violence threatening the people of southern Sudan. Attacks by the Ugandan rebel group, the LRA, the Lord's Resistance Army, are also taking place in Sudanese states bordering the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thousands of Congolese refugees have fled across the border to southern Sudan, desperately seeking refuge from the LRA in Congo. At the same time, tens of thousands of Sudanese are also fleeing LRA violence inside southern Sudan itself. Teresa fled LRA attacks in Nzara County in western Equatoria state. Her husband and brother were killed, her children abducted, and she now lives in constant fear of further attacks. Mm -hmm. 
Nanga, Buratina, and Gabra Tongo Tongo. A kidney is a casual boy, beginning in Miko, or do me a song, and not a battle out at the quarrel of Tilat, the Borat, Tilan and get a full art. Oh, go good as that, and go can all let me and go again and be do or go out to the year, my pika, me and go. Yara can do any good. Ogapai, I This violence causes urgent medical emergencies and massive needs for assistance. La population elle est vulnérable parce que tout d'abord en termes de santé mentale on, on se rend compte qu'elle est vraiment vulnérable. Euh, ils ne dorment pas la nuit, ils ont peur. Euh, beaucoup de gens ont encore peur d'être attaqués, euh, d'être connus. Euh, même quand on les interroge, on, on, ils, ont, ils ont peur de parler, ils ne te regardent pas dans les yeux. Ils ont, ils ont, ils ont souffert euh, des traumas euh, euh, terribles. Euh, les gens ont perdu leur, euh, leur récolte, euh, se retrouvent dans des endroits qu'ils ne connaissent pas, euh, sans argent, euh, sans toit. Et, euh, et souvent, euh, 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 même sans couverture, sans moustiquaire, etc. Today, the situation is acute. Médecins Sans Frontières is responding to emergencies almost every six weeks as the increase in violence comes on top of an already critical medical situation. In southern Sudan, only one out of four people can access the most basic health care. Malnutrition is chronic. Regular outbreaks of disease like measles, cholera, meningitis pose persistent threats to the lives of the people. The situation of emergency that we are facing now is something that uh, is added on top of already alarming uh, humanitarian situation. So what we normally see is already uh, problems uh, of access to health care. Uh, we know that the population is scattered, so reaching the facilities is sometimes complicated, sometimes impossible. Uh, on top of this, we have also the security, the food security situation. So the population doesn't have food, especially when there is violence, because violence means uh, insecurity of the roads, and so no transportation of, uh, of means. Yet as the crisis escalates, there isn't an adequate response from government authorities or the international donors. With the situation classified as post-conflict, the focus remains on long-term development aid at the expense of crucial emergency relief such as food, shelter, safety, and medicine. And it's important to realize that in time we need the world to see, to understand that we cannot focus only on development now. We need to think about emergency. We need emergency funds immediately on the ground.